Hi, brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing well. I was just trying to find a good angle, and then I noticed my husband's outside. He's spraying fruit trees. I don't know if he... <laughs> he's climbing up fruit trees and spraying them because last year we had such a horrible infestation of these Crulio plum crulios or something they get in plum trees and they put their eggs in there and they ruin the fruit and we got no fruit from our, um, any of our fruit trees just last year um, because they lay their larvae in the fruit and ruin it so anyways he's got some organic stuff going on out there because we don't put pesticides on our food so anyways um I actually have had I have had some dreams and I've been spending um, some time praying about them and just meditating on them and some I'm going to share with you. I don't have all the meanings to some of them, but I am going to still share them with you. Some of them are very are personal. Um, as always, the Lord kind of speaks to me in a way to where I'll understand and he uses people in my life to help me to understand means if you've been with me for a while one thing that I've shared with you when the Lord gives me dreams sometimes it's not necessarily in what's going on but it's in the meaning is in the people's names that is in my dreams and so the Lord has been bringing me some encouragement I've been meaning to come on it's just been it's been really hard I had my daughter was down from Saturday until Thursday and then uh, I dropped her off Thursday afternoon um, her friend came halfway she went to go try and get her license I don't, that's a whole nother thing we could talk about but anyways not on her thing I just <clears throat> anyways and um, then I came back here and then I just noticed does anybody else have grown children that has moved out and they don't live close to you and when they come and see you and they leave, you just grieve. It just naturally, like, I thought I was going to be good. I dropped her off. And uh, I was good. I had no grieving feelings. I'm like, awesome, maybe I'm going to get through this. And I'm not going to grieve. And then I got home, and as soon as I seen something that she was using while she was here, or I came downstairs to get laundry, do laundry, and she stored all her stuff in that bedroom, it was just... For two days, I was like tears in my eyes at a drop of a pen. I could just cry. She leaves, and I never know when I'm going to see her again. And then on top of that, from the revelation, if you've been here for the past couple of videos, um, of the word, word of knowledge that I was given from the Lord, um, you know, I know that was my last time that I'm going to see her, and she's not living for Jesus uh, my other, um, the other one that I claim as a daughter, Noelle, she also came for a couple of days and visited, and, um, although I don't really feel like I got, like, quality time with them while they were here, because they pretty much hung out together, I felt like it was more so, um, the Lord was giving me opportunity to see and the spiritual realm of their life so I knew how to pray for them so that's exactly that was a good tool that I was given while they were here from the Lord as the Lord to show me how I can pray for them to pray them through and so I definitely will be doing that okay I don't know how much I deleted some things from my phone so I had enough of space to be able to and I can bring all my stuff downstairs so I'm gonna go ahead and um Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray that you lead and guide me in everything that I do and say. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would run the show, that you would just show up, that you would lead, that none of these would be my words, Lord, but they would be yours, and that, Lord, you would, um, as I read through my dreams, Lord, if you have any interpretation um, to myself or through anybody else, Father God. I pray that you would reveal it in Jesus' name. Okay. So, I am going to go back. I am not sure. Um, where I left off. 
in uh, dreams with you guys. So I am going to just, I think I might tell you about my biometric dream. Oh, I had a dream about, so maybe that, maybe it. I've had some very interesting dreams. I've had some very interesting dreams. I'll read through a couple and I'll share a little bit. I don't want the video to be too long. So anyways, this one I titled Leaving Earth. I had this one on May 14th. I was at a place that seemed like a restaurant. A lady was sitting in a booth with other people. She was sitting on the outer side. Um, she was writing on paper and I believe I had like... I had a knowing that she helps people find homes for those in need. I told her that um, in my dreams a lot, I'm leaving Adam. And I know that it's not in Adam per se. It's in the meaning of his name. And his name means earth. So um, so basically, Han, I'll read it and then I'll go over it. I could really use get, help getting a place. She slid a pen and paper towards me and asked me to write down my information. After this, a man who was sitting across from her had a new baby, and it was in a car seat. I reached down to pick this baby up. I know it was very hairy. There was hair on his back, and it felt like it felt wiry, like, but it didn't bother me. It just like it wasn't even. It was like black and hairy. It kind of reminded me of like the in Esau. Esau, how he was hairy like that. A little while later, Adam was there, and I sensed that he. I sensed that he was there when the lady told me when I told the lady I needed help finding a place. So Adam, um, after the scene changed, Adam began to be rude to me. He said that he wasn't leaving without Keegan, and I was telling him no. And then I realized that people had accidentally left their baby with me and took my son with them. As I said before. Um, Adam means earth, and Keegan means uh, fiery one or thinker, so I don't really know what that had to do with it, but I was leaving earth, and I was looking for a place to live, and I believe that um, it's God's mansion, and I don't know if the lady was an angel that she, I don't, I don't really know that, but I just know, I kind of got the sense of, I was leaving, getting ready to leave earth, I was leaving my husband, my husband's name is Adam, which is earth, I was leaving earth in that dream, so, it's just like one of those things that the Lord keeps encouraging me on. Oh my goodness, this one's crazy. I really feel like this one was the Lord letting me know that he watches over not even just me, but his children. Man. Okay, I had this one on the 15th, so the next day. I've had a dream pretty much every single day, maybe miss a day or so, but I have a dream. Anyways, I was hanging out with a woman, I don't remember her name. I remember she was looking for a big hill to rent, to ski down or to sled down. I had looked through her Facebook and said, hey, you related to Danielle Busby. I don't know if you know, um, outdaughtered on TLC. Haven't seen the show in a super long time. And nor have they came up lately, but this dream automatically, um, they came up. So I said, maybe her and Adam know somewhere. I'm pretty sure they live in Michigan, which I'm pretty sure they don't live in Michigan. But in my dream, they lived in Michigan. I looked at Danielle's profile and seen Michigan. So I said to contact her. We ended up uh, being with her and Adam. We ended up going on a motorcycle ride. So, oh my goodness, it was so real. Um, the motorcycle, I was right. I had my own motorcycle and it was like... On the handlebars, there was like the, you, you know, the bikes that have the little metal piece behind it and you use those as, you squeeze them as brakes. It was like that on the motorcycle. And even like, there was a, a bunch of motorcycles and even cars we were getting on the highway. And uh, I like hit that and I think I grabbed, I think I squeezed maybe the brake too hard and I started like my, it started wobbling and I thought I was gonna crash and I realized the Lord had stopped me and I realized that. The Lord had saved me from um, crashing in the dream. We got to this place we had followed, so we decided to follow these other bikers. They would really seem to be with us, but we followed them anyways, and they had went to this house. They all went in. By the time we got there, and we are like, yeah, we don't want to be here. This like somebody's house, and we went to go leave. Somebody pulled in. A man pulled in, and he didn't seem to want anything to do with anybody else, like any of the other bikers. 
but he was like some kind of relation or some kind of like, there was some kind of friendship going on, but he didn't want to be like riding around with them or something. So they may represent um, ministry and then the guy that showed up didn't want to be caught with them, which sometimes the world gets embarrassed. Like if they're hanging around Christian people, we start talking about Jesus. So they just kind of like, yeah, kind of hang out on the sidelines. Anyways, um, so Adam, I believe Adam, because Adam, okay, the name Adam represents uh, man, earth, or ground. So um, in this dream, I believe that he represented um, man, because all of a sudden, like me, Danielle, and Adam were there, and Danielle was somewhere and Adam said, hey, go tell Danielle we're going to go outside and smoke. And I was like, well, I didn't smoke in my dream. But I was like, I said to him, I said, I didn't know you smoked. And he said, yeah. And so it was like innocent. I wasn't thinking anything of it. I'm like, okay, Danielle, we're going to go outside and smoke. So I went out with him. And I don't remember there being anything to that. But I just started realizing, okay, I feel like he's maybe flirty. Uh, he's married. I started having these feelings like hey, something isn't right. And then after that, the scene changed and we were in this building and there was like some class or something going on. And Adam kept trying to get me to go off with him away from his, from his wife. And to me, things were like innocent. And I'm like, have always been that slightly like naive person. Like I want to believe in the best of somebody. Like sometimes even, um, you know, before I was married and I lived a single life, people would be flirt with me and I wouldn't necessarily believe that they were flirting with me unless somebody said, hey, they're flirting with you. And so I'm just like, I'm naive when stuff like that. So anyways, so he kept trying to get me to go off with him away from his wife and naively I went off and um, there was a part, there was like a shower there and I noticed he was off to my left and I didn't look that way, but I could see in my peripheral vision that he was, so it was inappropriate. He was, I believe, in some kind of way, um, nonchalantly flirting with me or trying to get me to commit adultery. And I believe that that's how the enemy is. He works in, um, he works in manipulative ways to where, like, um, trying to seclude you and get you away from things and not necessarily I'll explain in a second so anyways the wife Danielle she starts noticing she, something just didn't seem right and she come I don't know if she didn't trust her husband or what but she come to check on her husband and to see where we were and I remember like I was like I don't want to be caught anywhere near here he's because he got undressed I could see my peripheral vision he was taking off his clothes to get in the shower I don't want anything to do with that I was like I'm getting out of here because I don't want any appearance of evil he is a married man so um I had up and I was praying about it because I didn't understand why am I having this dream with Daniel and Adam Busby and I believe the only reason why I had this dream with them is because um, Danielle means God is my judge. And Adam means earth or man or ground. So, uh, I believe that that possibly could, you could look at it as the, as man or, you know, people of the world, people of the earth or whatever, how the enemy works, trying to get you sucked into adultery, into sin, any kind of sin, tries to drag you off away from a place where it's safe because clearly in front of his wife he would have never flirted with me or he tried to drag me away from where the safe place was to try and flirt with me or um nonchalantly and, he, and it seemed real sneaky like um I don't know if you've ever been a place where people will slyly try to do things that way if you say hey uh-uh they would be like ah oh, you're just taking things out of proportion I didn't it wasn't like, I wasn't really flirting with you. I was just being nice to you. You took it as flirting. Like, they won't come out and make any bold statements. They'll kind of nonchalantly do it. And then if you press in, then they'll show more. But if you're like, uh-uh, then they'll be like, well, that's not really what it was. I felt like it was that situation, and that's how the enemy works. So I felt like the enemy kept getting, trying to take me away from a safe place, trying to take me out of, um... You know, like, 
where I was safe, try to get me alone. That's how he tries to work is to get people alone, get them away from safe places, get them away from other Christians, get them away, you know, in solitude. That way he can, you know, lead them astray and get them. So Daniel represent God as my judge and yeah, in uh, God, the judge kept looking, came looking and was keeping an eye on that man. So, was, okay, I don't, like I said, I don't have full meanings to all that, but I just kind of felt like, okay, this, this dream is crazy. I'm going to put a video in the link that I found after I had this dream. This blew me away. So, I think I wrote it down to what this means. Hopefully I did. Yes, I did. Okay. I had a dream that I bought a ticket to go to a conference called Biometric. It was for weight loss. I was on my way to this place. I was walking down a hallway. When I entered into the building, there was a lot of conferences going on. I ended up standing by three or four people. They were in a group, and they were there for a Christian conference. They assumed that I was there for it, too. I said, I am a woman of God, and I love Jesus, but I'm here for a different conference. Music began to start, worship music began to start playing, and a bunch of people and myself just laid prostrate on the floor to just worship the Lord when this music began to play. And I was down there for a couple minutes, and then I realized I had to get up because I had to go and find my conference. I began I began walking, I came to a desk area, and I realized this was a place I needed to check in for my conference. They had asked my name and gave me, said I had a balance remaining, and I said, no, I've already paid for my ticket. I reached in my left pocket, pulled out my, there was a paper and a receipt that was stapled to it, and I handed it to them. And they said, okay, I also seemed to where I was like eating something, it was like eating an obey cookie or something, and there was like some crumbs and a paper towel and I sat on the desk and then I began thinking I'm going to a weight loss thing I probably shouldn't be eating this it's really not fair for people who are like losing weight and I'm just eating this big old cookie or something so anyways after this I left the desk and started walking I ran into a few people they were heavy people um and they were excited they were going to lunch it was a break in the conference so I had missed part of the conference probably because I had stopped to chit chat with these Christian people who were there for a Christian conference and then got carried away and worship for a minute on my face. I asked them if I could hang out with them because I didn't want to get lost again and not being able to find that conference. I went and sat with them and was chit-chatting with them for a few minutes and then I had asked them, I said, this isn't a conference about um, cutting out uh, sugar and flour out of your diet, is it? And they said yes. And I was disappointed because I have recently just learned... I, I recently just learned about this again. I went to Over Eaters Anonymous before with my friend. I think I mentioned this. And did all that. And they had you do that. And then a couple months back or a few months back, I came across, I came across um, this. Um, it's like a weight loss plan. And it was. it's the same thing. It's like more in depth. and But there's more recipes than you know, what I was given for my Overeaters Anonymous plan. So anyway, when they said yes, I was disappointed. I was so disappointed, and I was like, I'm not staying for this. And um, I had noticed how I would seen them is that they had the they had a white sweatshirts on with hoods, the you know, hoodies, and it said biometric on their shirt, and that's how I knew that they were in the same conference as me. So anyways, I left. I was sitting at this table with three people, and this man was talking about somebody who had a lack of empathy. And I said, I have so much empathy, I could share my empathy with somebody else. <laughs> and then, you know, we all laughed. And then um, I was talking about how I was going to go to a conference. But then I realized that it was about cutting flour and sugar and how I was disappointed about it. Um... Hang on. Then I seen my friend Selena. I, yeah, I'm not going to mention that. Anyways, she just went to a house across the street. Anyways, the Lord has brought her up, and so I'm just praying for her. So I got up, and I came down, and after like I did my Bible study, and then I was writing down my dream, I ended up looking what biometric means because I didn't know what it meant. It seemed like it was familiar, but I didn't know what it meant. And this is what I read when I Googled it. 
Biometrics are body measurements and calculations related to human characteristics. Biometric authentication, authentication is used in computer science as a form of identification access control. It is also used to identify individuals in groups that are under surveillance. Yeah. So this is interesting. I was talking to my friend Veronica and she said, well, they are starting to uh, surveillance Christians and anybody who says anything against, you know, the plans that they have, uh, you know, there's going to be some consequences. And then it just reminded me of Luke 21 where it says some of you will be put into prison for 10 days on account of my name. And so I was like, all right, well, I don't know if I'm being surveillanced or if I'm going to be surveillanced or if that has anything to do with like the whole world, not just me, but, um, pray for me if you see me go to jail, cause, um, I'm going to defend the Bible and I'm going to stand on the word, even if it means going to jail for 10 days, like the word says. Okay. So 16, I didn't really have a dream. And then the 17th, I had a dream. So this is just a quick dream. I had a dream. I was in a big building with a lot of people. I had grabbed a few paper cups and a water bottle. I was going to go out and give it to whoever I seen on the road because we were having a water shortage. While um, in this building, I went to leave and three men were at the door. It looked like they had guns. I was trying to lock the door. I was holding it with my foot and my two hands. And I wanted to lock the door and run and hide, but it wouldn't latch. I was holding it shut with my foot. After a few seconds, they got through the door, but I just hid behind the door as it opened. And um, and they were looking around. I had yelled for help before they busted the door, but nobody came in. There was a lot of people in this building. So I stayed behind the door and watched. I believe they were looking for water. I believe I gave them some. The leader of the group ended up being a gentleman to me. They just wanted water. So... I had a dream about a lack of water. Uh, then I had a dream, Adam's mom. Um, I was somewhere. And Adam's mom and sister were there also. Adam's mom means God's promise. His mom and I were talking about a tracker they had bought for Keegan. It was like a tracker bracelet we were talking about. Um, and then we were talking about how his mom, God's promise had found a bunch of uh, homes for us to look at. So there's another, um, it's another thing with um, homes moving. We're going to be moving. Uh, decided we needed to write down our must-haves before looking for a home. Uh, she gave us a list of homes and we we're going to check them out. So God's promise we're looking for homes. So I believe he's just more confirmation. He's getting ready to come and get us. I believe that's all that is to that. This one on the 20th is amazing. Amazing. Oh. Oh, let me, let me just read this. I was really stressed out in my dream. I was first in a scene. Adam and a friend were sitting on the couch watching TV or talking. I walked into the room and a coffee pot was on the end table. I didn't do it. I believe that Selena did it. So I had to believe that Selena was in my dream again. Adam started picking an argument with me. Scene changed and I'm at a roller skating rink again. And I believe it was Adam. But the personality of um, my other kids' dad, Chad, yelling at me in public. A man named Emmanuel came and rescued me. We were just sitting in a car. He was holding me. I, uh, He was holding me from behind. I'm not sure what descendant he was, but he was tan with long, dark hair. The feeling I got from him was love. I wanted to be so close to him. I didn't say anything. He just held me. We ended up being in a van that my dad ended up driving after people were in the van. So my dad always represents the Lord in my dreams. I don't know what kid mean God the Father was driving the van. Uh, but Emmanuel rescued me and he radiated love. And I've never felt this kind of love before ever on earth. I wanted to be so close to him that I couldn't possibly get any closer. And he just held me 
and I don't believe he said anything. I believe he just held me, and the feeling that I got from him was just pure love. Nobody, I have never felt love from anybody ever in my life the way that I felt love from him. And it was just, it was amazing. Um, the dream that I had yesterday was kind of weird. I dreamed about Cracker Bell today. I usually, my dreams about Cracker Bell have actually slowed down. And they were, um, oh, I got a Charlie horse on my leg the other day. And all of a sudden, I mean, ever since then, I've had pain in my leg. Like, it did damage. It did pulled muscles or something. Um, so if you could pray for me. I've been praying and asking the Lord for healing. I'm not taking anything. I just got out of the hot tub and I'm just living through it. So if you could pray for me, that'd be amazing. Um, so anyways, this video is 25 minutes long. I know that people don't like to sit through really long videos. So if you have, God bless you. Uh, I, I share all this to share that um, the Lord's coming soon. And I know that he's probably showing you in your unique way. These are just the unique, unique ways that he encourages me and shows me, you know, along with, you know, videos and stuff that he sends along my way. And I also share those um, videos as well over on my Waiting for Jesus um Facebook page, I mean, Waiting on Jesus Facebook page, and so if you want to hop over there and, uh, you know, kind of just, if you just like I am and sometimes just need some encouragement, then you can go on there, and I try to, when I run across a very encouraging video, share it over there, because I know we're just exhausted, and we're ready for takeoff, so, but I'm going to get ready and go, I pray that all is well, I pray that you continue seeking the Lord. And I pray that you continue to seek Jesus, to pray to find yourself accounted worthy to escape all that is about to come. Because Jesus is getting ready to come get us. So stay faithful to him. Stay prayed up. Stay in your prayer closet. Um, be careful because the enemy is out roaring. Uh, what is it? He's out seeking whom he may devour. So make sure you stay really close to the Lord and keep your spiritual eyes and ears open and just um, let him use you because there's so many people out here who need him. And just know that even if right now you feel like you're not doing anything besides praying, that's ministry and he needs people who pray. So continue to be faithful to him and seek him and you will find him. I will see you soon or we'll be meeting in the air.